Hey guys, today I've been joined by Mr. Rick Shields. We are looking at his pitching technique. So I, I hate overhitting a wedge. Yeah. I absolutely hate it. If I know I've got a certain number, I don't want to hit a shot that goes any more than five yards longer than that number. Yeah. And my, the way that my technique was, yeah. it was unpredictable. I could have gone 10, 15 yards short, 10, 15 yards long, and somewhere in the num near the number sometimes. <laughs> well, that, that last shot was a perfect example. This is a, a kind of 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock swing, which yeah. is, we're going to talk about this now. Yeah. Oh, sorry, 10 to 2 swing it was, a 10 to 2 swing. 10 to and 2, 79 yards. 79 yards. That last one went 79.4. Yeah, and what I really like about that is that I don't feel like, I feel like I could hit that as hard as I wanted, and it won't go much further than that. Yeah because we're not changing the loft as much. And that's what we've worked on today. But yeah, massively. So what Rick's tendency is that obviously, when he starts to take the club going back here, tend to get it where it's hitting the length of swing pretty much ideally every time. So controlling the length and you know, whether that's gonna be a clock length swing, whether you want to look at that as you know, numbers on a clock, nine, 10, 11, or whether you're looking at body positions, whether it's hip, chest, shoulder, whichever one it is that suits you, you've gotta be able to hit those positions every time. Yeah. And that's really what, we looked at that a lot last time, didn't we, you know? And I, and I do. Yeah. I hit, that's what was frustrating me, that the length of swing was excellent to where I thought it was going to be. Yeah. But because I changed the dynamic loft so much because of the movement of my body, that's what was causing the unpredictability, unpredictability of ball flight. Absolutely. So that's what we've really worked on today. Yeah. And what was happening was, in that transition, upper body was going forwards here a little bit, which is de-lofting the club. Now, if you think about a really long drive with the golf ball, they tend to back up this way through impact, and that allows the arm to really release with a lot of speed and a lot of power. So what we're seeing was the upper body was going forwards here, and then it meant you had to back out a little mm. bit through the ball, and then there was a lot of energy in the arm, and that was what was really changing that club head speed a lot. And now, obviously then, at the bottom, those arms were exploding out, so we're finding the follow-through was a lot longer. Yeah. Because, you know, first he said that follow-through seemed quite long, so then we looked into why that was, what was causing it, and why the loft and the launch angle was changing every time. Should I try and play the, the original yeah. shot? Yeah, please do, mate. Should we try and play it, film it from this front view to see that so I can show it? I don't know if you can get all that in. So my normal tendency would be to be a little bit left-sided, to get the shaft leading forward, mainly to stop to fatting it. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I, I, something I would pet hate as well is fatting a, a wedge shot. I very rarely did. If anything, quite the opposite. I would almost yeah. thin it too much. Get my weight across, get my, my shaft too forward. I would then double that up with another movement to the left yeah. and then go, hold on, something needs to change. And suddenly go, whoa, and try and add loft. But the problem with that, that's another variable that we don't want. It's another variable that dictates the change of ball flight and then the change of distance. So what we've really worked hard on today is this idea of just getting the hip forward, slightly weight back, what it feels like Absolutely. in my upper body. And then as I then turn to this, what I would classify as my 10 o'clock swing where my left arm is just past this parallel point, I feel like my weight's here. Yeah. But it's not. <laughs> no. And that's what's astonishing. It feels like my weight's right back here. And then from that point, then I can just turn through, allowing my hips just to raise and I don't get that explosion of weight shift and then back up as I come in to hit it. Yeah. As I said, is that right? Is that right, oh, coach? No, that's right. Are we good with that? We're really good with that. <laughs> so I'll play the original one. I'll play, this is what I'd normally do. Weight a bit left. I would try and drill it in there almost too much. I'd get really steep, trappy, unpredictable golf shots. I mean, it would come out quite snatchy, wouldn't it? You know, it looks look snatchy at the bottom. Yeah, you know, 100%. There's a lot of speed there. And that, to try and control the distance, it was like the follow-through was aggressively quite short. You know, I, like, look, let's just stop that, you know. I honestly didn't think, if you wouldn't show me the numbers, I thought I would have hit that uh, too, too far, way too far. Yeah. It was actually 86 yards, which is, yeah. too, I said, out, it's out of my where I feel comfortable. Yeah. But I didn't feel like I hit it that hard. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, yeah. I knew the ball came out hot. Yeah. But I didn't feel like I hit that hard. Yeah. Well, the other technique, the one that we've been working on today. It's got a softer, 
kind of softer kind of feel for face, hasn't it? Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Get my hip up. Get my weight back. I'm still going to do the same length of swing where I get to this left arm position at ten o'clock, and then swing through to two. I don't know if you'll be able to pick up the difference in audio on that shot, but it sounds so much different. That was 83.4 yards, and I hit that hard. And you said at the start, it never want to go more than four yards long or no, short. I hate it. Which was the big thing, wasn't it? Yeah. 79 yards is the number that I want to hit from that shot. Maximum is that, 74. Maximum, maximum, yeah. maximum. And, and obviously still shortest, like 75 Absolutely. yards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it gives you that kind of window then that you're never going to be that far away from the flag, with it? Have you, got, have you still got that magnet stick? Yeah. Can I just show something quickly on that as well? Because what we were talking about is how, why this is changing and what, what effective loft and direction of the face it's changing. Because not only distance did I used to struggle, was direction would really struggle as well. Yeah. So as I would come into here, and it probably bet from down the line there, I would go shaft forward... I would then move left, create loads of angle here. Yeah. Now look where that, or unless I do something dramatic. Go miles right. Dramatic or non-dramatic, how do I point that straight? Yeah. It's you really have to change. Correct. Where now I feel the rotation of my body, even though I'm still creating the same hinge, I'm not as aggressive to the left. And for me, that club is predictable. Yeah. That stick on the golf club is predictable in loft and face direction. Completely. That's what I love about it. Because not only the distance I've been impressed with today, it's direction as well. Oh, they've not, they've not hit any really offline. So, you know, side to side, it's been really tight for the whole <clears> time you've been in it. What so, do you think about dead quick? Show us what that... Because this is quite new, isn't it? The dead hand swing. Okay. Okay, so this is pretty good, this one. Because this is... This is around kind of yardage and in that you've always struggled, kind of 60 into maybe that 40 number, okay? And what we're just looking at is taking the hands out of it, so I'm going back, so there's no wrist cock in the back swing. Correct. It feels like I'm going back and this is not, it, it feel, that, it, that's what it feels like to me. Stay stricken. Yeah, that's what it feels <laughs> like to me. So I feel like I'm going back with no wrist set at all. Yeah. And then from there then just turning through. And it's then about getting the pacing of the arm and the body. As long as they're paced together, you were even saying, you felt like you could go really hard at it yeah. as long as you just used your body in the right manner every time. What I loved about going really hard at it, because I'm not de-lofting the head, I can generate more spin. Yeah. So I can present loft and speed, create the shallow angle and just load it with spin, even yeah. though it's not coming out like a bullet. Yeah. What's the number on this? So this was dead hands, this is 56. I've just got, this is the wedge chart I did. But if you can just pick this up, this is the wedge chart I did. So 56 degrees the club I've got, eight o'clock, no hinge, 54 yards. No pressure. We got. We, we've, got, <laughs> we've got Trap Man programmed to hit 54.3 here, haven't we? We have. Okay, so 54. It never goes more than 56 on this swing. We'll see. That's what Trap Man's yeah, But adrenaline now, I'm in camera. This is like, <laughs> this is good. That's what I want to test it like, right. So eight o'clock, no hinge, and then just turn through. No more than 54. 56.2. Stay two yards off. Two yards off. What was it? What? What did it take? Come on. Anyway, so, one more. No, go on, you, you chat. Sure. Yeah. Well, this, this technique on this last one, for me, I think, is really key for all you guys. Doing this shorter yardage, I think that this is the big difference between the top players and kind of the mid handicapper is that it's really difficult to control the short yardage. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. I'm sure all of you have already subscribed to Rick, but if you haven't, jump over there. Thanks for watching, and we will talk with you again very soon.